that said that brother you also accept and believe and proclaim that your status is changing it's changing for good amen we finished FCST conference and while he was preaching someone sat quietly and at some point then I asked me that is this Ezekiel yes I said this is Ezekiel I said no wonder and so today we are also privileged to have that same Ezekiel to minister to us now I already introduced him but for the good of those who were not here when the introduction was going on the person that is going to bring the word of God to us this morning is the immediate past chaplain of this assembly. And uh, his name is Reverend Dr. Ezekiel Hayo. You're welcome, sir. Let us pray together. Say an sir. Uh, Father, we thank you for another blessed moment to counter you by your word. We thank you for one another that we are privileged to witness a mystery that you have evolved and you are doing which changes people's status. We thank you so much for granting us the privilege to be here today. You know us individually you know our challenges, you know where we need help. Send it to us because your word, the entrance thereof, it delivers, it heals, and may all of this be our portion. Let it come as instruction, as a rebuke, as a reproof, as an instruction, Structure, even to bring salvation to our souls and to make us strong and build strong homes to your glory. Thank you for hearing our prayers and doing much more than we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Count it a privilege to uh, bring God's word to us. Ayo he didn't make pishi ulun on ebe pona na se imkane ma on the hipepe ne. We shall take our reading. Se lo all imkane ma on the. From where the church to the newly uh, wed. And the instruction to all of us we come from. I join everyone to congratulate uh, Sam Pepe and uh, Susan. That's how we call him, so even on this day. <laughs> They are young people I know very personally for some time now. And um, I had no restraint in my spirit to trust God to bring his counsel even today. When I say I know them, I know them as disciples. There are people that have repented and loved Jesus and want to grow. That's what I mean. So we are reading from Matthew chapter 19. We shall start reading from verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. A great multitude followed him and he healed them there. 
the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore God has joined together let not man put asunder they said unto him why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away he said unto them Moses because of the hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives but from the beginning it was not so and I say unto you whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committeth adultery and whosoever marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery his disciples said unto him if the case of the man be so with his wife it is not good to marry let's stop there um, yes you have the bible yes. please quickly read mate chwe tankri po tankri ni yumo so zumu yesu kure ka olun ne yo amo kan galilea ava kan ve ta o yuda yandi yuda bila yo kishi don du shana abe vangi ke samba farishi mbagane vahere na baba kare un kae irumunu na na pa akwasu na shahama chakya shini agma kae nemba wa ko ingela ga eun wa evela shahi hi la je ave nom so ko akwasi ana kae kasha chu na hama nom so na na undu teru na Mangona and Avaka Kwasuna, who have a hingy yo myoga. Now, I am my youngie, look and bow haga, but I yo myoje. Quon do je, Zuayo, or deca pavin hunger. The Kana, eh? So in Amma Moselu Natindi, eh, Nataka do vi pavin, she power na passe. A cave. Shachum chi was a man, Mose Barumontoye. Mose Barumontoye, and the Pav A Cassian, eh? But Shahi, he jail, Luna Hanga. But Mugukan, Neme, Hamo, Nana Pava Kwasuna. But Alu Shachu Jaga, Mananaguma, Ay, Kwasu Gayo, Kajaje, Nae. But Aka Ave, Kayo Chi. Sorry, you put my hand in a car, and I have a cup of no, I was a little yo, good down, no, qua. Maybe that's why many people are 60 bachelors. I like a cup of will you, but then they will be a casica jera. You're back, all right. Now, looking at this passage, you will discover that in verse 3. Jesus was being tempted with a question on divorce. And the Pharisees, who were religious people, put a question to him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So you see, when we are talking about 
marriage and the issues there too. It's not only about people who are not religious. Even religious people have issues to raise. Alo kaolon ko ivya ma aka aka luke aka sha chumba vuzi dua gati zi vuzi dua kwa mba aka pine. These people were experiencing failure in marriage. They were seeing difficulties. And they were looking for a way out. And they wanted an authority to confirm it that look, you can do it. I thank God that they knew that they cannot on their own just do it. Today, certain persons just wake up and say, I don't want again and think that they can divorce like that. Ask the Pharisees, they know better than that. They were looking for an authority to give them the lead to do it. So they came to Jesus and made that question. Now, what we are going to be looking at very briefly is the, rather the question why do marriages fail? So, we are not looking at whether we should put away with divorce or not divorce. Even that question is very, very current today. Many, many believers are of opinion that if it's not better to be alive than to, to die. No, the context. They, the, even believers, they are wondering that with the challenges in marriage, it's better to divorce them and be alive than to stay and die. Okay. So that question is still there and Jesus' answer is still there the same. So I am not going to attempt that matter because that's not the burden of the Lord. Rather, what we are looking at, we want to find out why these people were having problems and to the point they were seeking authority to divorce. And the reason is that so that we don't get to that point. So that these two young people entering into this marriage today never get to that point. And those who are afraid of marriage and they are saying, oh, if the thing is like that, let, better let me be alone. So, that they also be instructed. Hallelujah. So we are looking at why do marriages fail? Here Jesus gave one comprehensive reason. And it's that reason that I want to focus on this morning. In verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, have you not read? Have you not read? Please help me ask your neighbor. Have you not read? Have you not read? Have you not read? As far as heaven is concerned, that is why marriage is fake. Lack of reading. When people will not take time to read what is written about marriage, they are prone to fail. 
Shenu yo kawe kawa ton ya wolun ko inge shako vya gaya badzan shakwendo banke vya. He didn't give them many reasons. He gave them this one reason. Marriage has a manual. He that originated it, which is God, also gave us a marriage manual. So when anybody refuses to read the manual, you are going to fail in your marriage. And it's only then that you are seeking for a way out of marriage. You are asking questions, looking for who will support you to divorce. But if you go to the right source, they will always tell you this matter. If it's heaven that is going to answer you, it will still refer you to reading culture. Many of you who are preparing to marry and you are not reading, you are preparing to fail. And those of you who are in marriage and you think there is no need to read anything again, you are also preparing not to succeed. Because the answer from heaven says, Have you not read? Believing that if you read the Bible, and any relevant materials about marriage, you will succeed. But when you are careless about this, you will have problems that will be, you will be tempted to think of divorce. Now, the next issue, which is about this point is that there are things that Jesus as he answered them was pointing out that when you are reading correctly you should read about them but, yes yes it's not just reading there are things that when you are reading correctly you will discover and those things will constrain you they will help you they will train you and they will make you prosperous the first of them is mentioned still in that verse 4 and he answered and said unto them have you not read that 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 there means these are the things that if you are reading you should have been reading and what is that that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. That is one thing that anybody who takes time to read the manual, the Bible, the word of God about marriage will discover. Many of the challenges that we find in marriage originate from this lack of understanding of our gender identity. That God made them male and female. Not male only. Not female only. Is male and female. With roles and responsibilities. Roles of the male. Responsibilities of the male. Roles of the female. 
responsibilities of the female God did not hide from us so when we don't take note of this and enter into marriage and want to change this creation pattern and make them all males all only females there is bound to be a problem and an unending problem that will be the suggestive divorce as the way out somewhere you must never attempt to change Susan to become a man any such attempt you will only regret because as you have a conviction that you are not the maker God who made he made male and female and when we talk about trying to change we are talking about responsibilities and roles let your wife be wife. And let her do what she was created fearfully and wonderfully to be. Then you will enjoy it. But when you discover that I don't have a brother, I don't have, so I want her to be my brother. You want to make her a male. You are already in trouble. Because it was not another man you were looking for. That's why gay marriage, all of us believe that it's not correct. And Susan, 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 Sam must not become a female. Sam you will not marry another female. It was a man. Otherwise, this chapel would not agree to officiate this marriage. And I will not be here. So, don't ever wish to convert Sam to become another female in the house. So when you are reading the Bible you will see distinct roles and responsibilities that God gave to those he created. And that's, that's, why, that's why the man of God was reading out the, the, the form and say you don't enter into this unadvisedly. You wait for cancer. And you go through the training so that you will make success of your relationship. And when you are reading the manual correctly, Another thing you will find is in verse 5. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and their twain shall be one flesh you will discover the desire of God from the beginning is that they should be one flesh when God saw Adam laboring in the, in the vineyard the Bible says he said it is not good that the man should be alone. Say no, it's not good. This, this aloneness is not good. But Adam was working very hard. He named everything God created. 
He was watching and dressing the, 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 the garden. But he was alone. And God said, it's not good. That means, no matter how hard working you may be, what God is finding it difficult is aloneness. It's not that you are lazy. Sometimes men, they have a matter there. They are hard working. And to them, everything is all about hard work. To the extent that they can even leave their spouse behind and go ahead because of hard work. And God says it is not good. So he created the woman. Out of the man. But he now expected that when we study, when we read, we will discover the need to leave and to cleave. That's why choir was reminding you that you are beginning, is it your status is beginning to change? Initially, I wanted to fold and say, No, it's not beginning. They have already changed. It's husband and wife now, but I discovered no, it's not just about pronouncing them husband and wife. So it's changing. And so you need to know that you are going to leave and to cleave. Otherwise, you won't get the result. That's why many of us, you see the troubles you have in your marriages is when you refuse to leave. You refuse to leave your parents. You refuse to leave your siblings. You refuse to leave your friends. You refuse to leave whatsoever and whosoever. And as long as you have refused to leave, you cannot cleave. It's only when you leave that you can cleave. And one thing is that nobody must be indispensable to you to leave. When there is anybody like that in your life, your marriage can never be what God wanted it to be. One. Because one lady married and she had a friend. And she refused to leave that friend. And the husband kept saying, no, this man cannot be our friend. He must leave. The lady refused. Several weeks or one month or so into the marriage, they, they were still on that matter. And she was a lady I knew when she repented and was growing before she was transferred to another town. So after the marriage, I decided let's go and visit them and see how they are doing. And we found them in this situation. We spent day and night talking to them. See, look, it can't be like this. And this ladies insisted that sir please persuade my husband to allow this man to be our friend and after three days there's nothing we could do I came back few weeks after I learned that the man packed out of the marriage and few months later 
I also heard that he remarried. See, today as I speak, that's the situation. They are not one because there was no living. And as long as there was no living, there was no cleaving. Psalm number 45. Let's take a, a very simple but very powerful illustration there on this point before we come back. 45 verse 10. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thy ears. Forget also thy own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. Kanahama asato ado shewoye for he is thy lord. Gadia un kateruje and worship thou him. Gure chivi unpa. Hallelujah. Wesite. Very short but powerful charge. Ugende paka kwa olono tave dido. The psalmist received and is given to all daughters. This is already taking into a cognizance that the man had already left his father and mother and clipped to his wife as in that Genesis chapter 2 or even where we read in Matthew. And the Holy Spirit felt necessary to instruct daughters also. It told them never to, to incline that ear. Open your ear very well. What makes marriages to fail is when there is a failure to read or to listen. And what are they saying? Say, forget also. Okay, Hungu. Thy own people. I don't know who they are. you are calling your people. Sometimes they may even be classmates. Sometimes it may be any other people. Professionals. Business. Community. Everything. They are your people. Heaven is not denying it. He's saying, as long as you will not forget them, your beauty shall be in vain. And as long as you will not forget your father's house, every day you are thinking of your father's house, in your husband's house, then your marriage may have it. A problem. I know this kind of instruction, if it's coming just from someone's head, you say, Get away! What nonsense thing is that? Thank God we are reading the, it from the Bible. Women of old who, who obeyed God, who feared and obeyed God, they obeyed this kind of instructions. But today it's a big matter. Right even from name. People hardly will drop their father's name. Brother, I was your mother is still bearing the father's name and your father's name. No, they will, they will not do that. Once they were married, they were married. Today is foolish because people say, My father trained me. I am what I am because my father trained So you will refuse to forget your father's name. But here they even say, Your father's house. Which Which 
And your father's house is even bigger than the name. Heaven went on to give us the benefits. Say so that your the king shall greatly desire your beauty. And you know that king here is not capital K king. Is the king is small letter K meaning your husband. The kind of king that Sarah had in Abraham. You may be so beautiful that it's just dropping. Your beauty is dropping. Cha, 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 cha. The king will not desire it. As long as you will not forget your own people and your father's house. If you go to verse 12, you will see another benefit. How gifts will pour into your family. Your family will not lack. Because you have obeyed God's word. To live and to cleave. And that there will be harmony in the family. Your husband cannot afford to have you away for one week like that. And vice versa. May Lord help you with courage. As she might have courage, she might have to live so as to cleave in the name of Jesus. Going further, in verse 6 of Matthew 19, Jesus was giving another index of what you will find if you are reading. Wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. I've spoken about that. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. See, there are two Two personalities in that verse. Deep, deep part. Two personalities. Only here. Two activities. God and man joined and asunder. These are the things when you are reading the manual you will be discovering. You will keep God his place and man his place and you will know how useful is God and how dangerous man may be. Because Whereas God is interested to see the two of you join and is actually the one who joins. On their salon, nengen de nitsu anilu yo mi oma ka un je zwane onilu yo mi omye. What man may be looking for is to how you people will be asunder. Ba oya ko na fe ku na lu nengen nene pavia. Trying to pick out some gaps in your relationship. Nongoya ma onzo mananzoa talk a kivi a yene. Or introduce gaps. In your marriage, they will want to hear that you have begun to have problems. If they will not know, they will ask you, say, ah, What is happening? You are not telling us anything. I hope uh, you know they will do all those things. That's man. They are not looking at how to make you stronger together. But they will rather want to hear how you are struggling. Because in reading, you will know that ah, 
is God we must hold in this marriage. I I had two experiences of recent about marriages that are very painful. One good brother. I respected him much. He repented before some of us. So by the time we repented, he was our senior friend and uh, teaching us well. Then later on, he got married. He's in married 31, 32 years now. But last year, he went to court and, you know, sue for divorce. This is a pastor and he retired. When I heard it, I said, what, what am I hearing? I was not sure, but I decided courageously to, to, to text him. Say, sir, what am I hearing? I hope it's not one of these fake news that you are in court to divorce your wife. After two days, he replied. And he said, uh, Sorry, I didn't carry you along, but 31 years of my marriage has been held. As, as, I say it's not true, sir. That's not what you taught us. Me and my wife, we are standing in prayer for you that this thing will not happen. We continue talking. But at a point he felt that he has a different orientation and my own orientation is different about Christianity. No, we are open again. Oh. We are not talking about an orthodox person. Well, thank God the first, the first ruling the thing didn't work. The court struck out for this lack of jurisdiction. I'm just praying that he will not go back again to the court. Then last week I was hearing about another. Another couple, young couple that are in court for divorce. His lack of reading of the manual. Because you know that court was not the one that joined. When man of God was making declaration, he said, Words over God are joined together. Lord, no man put asunder, and we all shouted, Amen. So how will you leave God to go to court to, to put you asunder? It is lack of reading or proper reading of the manual. Even when you have problems, you can go to God. You can't go to man to put you asunder. It was on this altar some years back. One man came here to do one. Some people went to do one to do wedding here. And I'm not telling you the, 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 the contradictions. That if you go to man to put you asunder, that man could be two of you, as you were, you were told. You discover that you will not rest. So, so that man was here. We all sat here to do uh, wedding for some. Young young 
So when they call him as the pastor of those people, he now hijacked the microphone and did everything to the end. When the time to preach came, he heard out his Bible and his wife was sitting somewhere here too. Say, this is my wife. This Bible gave me my wife. Yango o la ti mahen lo pastor ka yila un e lo pastor yon ba ekwe pebe zo ave se ya yon kwa va ava ya kwa oti ka ve ma vango ho kolo ma e hama kwa da be ka wa nao pe pa sen ka ne monde ya a kwa bibilo ke ne misha ka wone ka bibilo ne ye nao kwa sena ye You know what he was defending? Ufa kwa wone yan lo ele ne? If I'm not mistaken that was his third wife Alu olu hongo honge ya kwa su wone yan lo olu kwa te sen ka bibilo e nao ne lo kwa sena o sha ota so he's he's defending, he's defending his remarriage. Is that how all of us who are married are doing? Why will he be doing like that? Is because he's reacting. But you know, man has helped him to put a son down, but he's not resting. He's not at peace. So under no circumstances can we ever attempt it. The people say, oh, but Moses, Moses, is Moses God or man? Jesus said, no, 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 you are not understanding where. Moses allowed you to divorce your wife because of your own hardness of heart. It's not Moses' fault. It's your fault. So what makes a marriage to fail is hardness of heart of the couples. The kind of heart that somebody can carry into marriage and succeed is the heart full what Bible called the bowels of mercy. Ishima Yonato Man, I know I mean Kivi have a coach, Yakashima and Bo, I'm Hono Matsunguya. When you carry a bowel of mercy as your heart condition, you can forgive and forget any offense. Kao Lueshima and Bo, I'm Hono Matsunguya for two down, look what Bo Nashi Hungu. But as long as your heart is hardened, you can never, never forgive even the smallest of offenses. That is why we insist that people that should marry must have receive a new heart from the Lord. A heart of flesh. Not a stony heart. That is the experience we call born again. So when you are here and, and you have not yet exchanged your old heart for a new heart of flesh it may be opportunity for you to do that before the end of this marriage ceremony so that the troubles you are facing in your marriage, the new heart full of mercy will help you out of them all. This is not to mean that there will be no offenses. Because the Bible tells us in Luke 6, 17, verse 1, that offenses must come. In this life, they must come. The only difference is that you, the kind of heart you carry. And many marriages are failing because, because couples, they are still with the old heart. And they have refused to exchange them. Whether you are already married or you are not yet, you are not married. I want to charge you this morning. So you need a new heart. The 
the heart you inherited from your parents cannot see you through in the marriage. I just imagine if I, I was not able to receive a new heart from the Lord before I went into marriage. And so the kind of heart my father had to marry 22 wives and then to beat his wife if any of us, you know, you know, children can be very tricky. If a child is crying, maybe you are turning food on the on the fire, turning food, and then the child is there crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those kind of rubbish. My father will go there, he will carry the food and throw outside. Say the child is crying. Are you not higher hearing? Imagine that kind of heart. Hmm. Ah. The crowd, the crowd of a child. That's the offense, the crowd of a child. How will that kind of marriage succeed? Well, you know, my father was with a natural heart. Until a few weeks to his death. That was what made the difference for him. And he regretted it. He regretted it. I'm begging you, don't wait until it was your death to regret. You need a new heart. But a heart of flesh. Not the heart of stone that we were born with. Which cannot forgive and forget. We need a heart of flesh. That when we read the word of God, we will read it with understanding. And we'll be able to obey what it's saying. Without this, your marriage will continue to be a problem and you'll be seeking for divorce. You are my treasure. You will forget that one. You are my mother. <laughs> and the way some young people live with their mother, I don't even envy them. I don't envy to be a mother of such a person. But there is something that makes the difference. And that you must never leave behind. As we pray. I want you to look at your life first as a young person have you received that new heart that heart of flesh not the hardness of heart as Jesus was blaming these people for whether you are married what heart are you building your marriage with? Can't you see that's the reason why your problems are not ending? Don't you think it's time for you to come to Jesus? So that he can remove the old heart and give you a new heart. So that he can forgive you all the offenses that you have committed against your spouse. And when we do that, this will be the first benefit God will derive from this marriage. This marriage will be established. Your marriage will be healed and, and established if you will continue. Don't say, ah, oh, Pastor, if you knew my own, it's beyond repair. It's a lie. The Bible tells me that with God, all things are what? Possible. 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 Possible.
impossible. Biblio kaya ondo ya kachi ya kochiu. It doesn't matter how old. It will be. Bashanzo kuara tega. God is here. Onunguhe. And is ready to do something new in your family and your life. Mashe wajolo ulinuko ahekumu mawo mahi ya wapa. Let us pray. See a name, sir. Bow your heads in prayer. So I need you to see a name, sir. Examine your life and your marriage. He did check in woman, woman, via you. If you are not married, check your preparations. Well, we have also got nengi yo wan yo shakovia. Marriage does not fail because of lack of money, poverty. No, 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 it's not poverty. If you are not sanctioned, shut your changa. You don't need to have plenty of money to succeed in marriage. Saul we nyali kishivu via yoye court yoga. You need to read and to read well. Agba po wa shivu wa tsimbele. Knowledge is it. Kwa fa kaku ilo alunjela. Some of you, you have refused to. Forget your people. That's why your marriage has challenges today. Some of you, your father's house. If you are not gone physically, your handset goes there every time. For every decision in your, father, in your in your marriage, it must be directed by your father's house. How will you not have challenges? You are not settling down to build your marriage. Will you ask the Lord to forgive you? And to give you a new heart. Take away the hardness of heart. And he will do it. And if that's your prayer, can I also pray for, for you briefly before I end? You are saying true. Preacher is true. I know I made mistakes. But, but God, please help me. Help me. You are pained, but God can change it for you. You want that new heart. Can I ask you to raise your hand up? So that we can pray together. The Bible says, if two of us shall agree as touching anything we pray, God will do it for us. Yes, I can see some hands. Put them up very well. Don't be ashamed, or there's nothing to be ashamed of here. When your marriage is healed, everybody will celebrate. That's all. You are not doing anything strange. If you are still there, you are not raising your hand. Quickly do it so that we can pray together and you are not left out. Okay, now those of you who are raising your hand so that your hand will not be weak, stand up on your feet where you are. You are. Just stand up where you are. Stand up on your feet. Only those who raise their hands. Yes. If you do, don't. Oh. It's for, it's for our good. It's for our good. Any other person? Any other person? Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. That's courage now. How can you continue to suffer defeat? Tell the devil off. He has wasted your years. He can't waste it and rob you of this opportunity today again. Imagine you have been in church for many years. But going to church has not solved this matter for you. But God will do it. Now, I'm going to pray for you. 
I want you to open your mouth and say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I've come to you. Have mercy on me. Forgive my trespasses. Come into my heart. Change it. Take away the stony heart. As you did to Nebuchadnezzar. Give me a new heart. A heart of flesh. To hear you. And obey you. I come to you today. With assurance. That you can do this. Thank you because you are faithful. I commit my whole life and family into your hand. Change the situation in my marriage. As you change my life, change my marriage. Establish it. And make it something to give you pleasure. Thank you for answering my prayer. Lord Jesus, take over. Yes, Satan, I have nothing to do with you again. I forsake you and all your ways. And I live for Jesus. From now forward. Thank you for answering me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now I will pray for you. Don't, don't repeat again. Father, I thank you for these lives that are standing this morning before you. They are responding to no man than to your word. You sent that word. And these ones have received it with meekness and are turning over their lives and their marriages to you. As many as they are, you know the various needs in their lives and families. You are able to do it. We commend them to you to change their situations as a foundation for what you will do in this new marriage that you have joined today. Lord, we ask, whatsoever the power of the enemy that is against any one of them and whatsoever covenants that have been entered into with the devil concerning their marriages never to succeed. Standing on this altar, Lord, and joining my heart with all your people here, we agree that all such covenants are broken and all such incantation against them is nullified in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God of heaven and earth, that you will uphold them. They came from different communities and they are going back to their various homes. Father, you will go with them. You will keep them. You will introduce them. You will strengthen them. And the Lord, when they the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ shall appear, they also shall appear in glory with you, rejoicing that at this wedding you intervene in their lives and families. Thank you for doing this and doing much more than we ask. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you. If you want to